Hello YouTube, Mr. Report, and Tutor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is June 16th, 2020. And this is the update report for newsletter number 13. This weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood. Testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. And this week, Michael wants to dive into the topic of the soul. This is uh, it was done from Bonnie, if you search my videos, um, back in 2017, I believe. And uh, many people right now are having questions about the soul. And this looks like a good opportunity. So Michael is trained in the uh, field of psychology in University of Chicago, which he calls the Godless University of Chicago, in hum human development. And um, psychology and years after graduation, I learned about all the government-sponsored projects designed to manipulate and control the field of psychology. So he's going to, to use Webster's Dictionary and to find the spirit, the soul, and the body. Right through here, you can click on these links. And Michael's given me some kind of perspective on where he, the looking glass that he's seeing through based upon his education and definitions of the terms. And then he's, he has some questions. Can you elaborate on this notion that the soul is substantial and different in some humans than other humans referred to as brutes? And are these tares with different souls, different DNA as well? Also, when one is called to serve, which I didn't quite understand, Michael, when one is called to serve, because that can mean a few different things, what is known about the nature and quality of the soul with respect to development? What is the change at the substance level? What about the soul incarnating in past and future ages? Is it more developed in future ages or past ages? So beginning... Um, thank you for writing. Webster's is going to be an unlikely source for getting to the bottom of what the soul of man truly is in relation to the spirit and the body. A better source would be akin to, it doesn't have to be, but akin to, it's going to be a Vine's Expository Dictionary of New T Words or uh, Strong's, somebody that's going to define the way the terms are used by the ancient peoples. Because many times the English word like the word mysterion, mystery, doesn't mean the mysterious. It means something hidden that, that's revealed later down the road. So, um, let's see. So, it, oh, so then uh, now I'm quoting uh, Michael. He says, so we have three witnesses, spirit, soul, and body, um, with the soul enlarging. And that's true of all of the blood witnesses. The soul is referring to the immortal substance which distinguishes him from brutes. Now, he wants me to elaborate on that, and I'm hoping that Webster is defining the differences between human beings and brutes as being beasts. And so, did, did a little research and looked at the definition, and the brute is relating to beasts. So, it's not that the distinguished that the differences between men and subhuman men or people that would be elite and characterizing those of lesser, lesser than themselves based upon their own standard as being somehow brutes or beasts or something like that. So the way that I'm moving forward is the brutes are the beasts and humans are humans, all people, whether white, black, red, yellow, whatever. Okay, so that's my hope, and that looks like that that's what it is based upon the first definition of the term. Then, uh, where there is a difference between six-day people and seventh-day people, the differences concern where the soul is tethered. That Webster and even the theologians have little uh, clue about. 
the um, that's where seeing God's witnesses of spirit, blood, and water throughout the scriptures helps you because God teaches you these things using the types. Once you understand what a spirit witness is, what a blood witness is, what a water witness is, how that makes comprises a man that is not necessarily a man. It is a man in that we have a spirit, soul, and a body. But the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit comprise a man too, Christ Jesus. And so that's the image of a man. So what I would like to do, let me see if I have that pulled up for you. Yeah, right here. Six-day people. You hear me making references to six-day people because there is a difference between six-day people and seventh-day people on our planet. This is God creating six-day people. See, this is still on the sixth day, Genesis 1, 26 to 28. God doesn't sit down in his son, which is that's what he does when he rests. He rests in his son. In uh, Genesis 2, verse 3. And then the Lord God begins his work on the seventh day. The Lord God being the Lamb of God. He began doing his creating thing. Which many people believe is just a rehash of what happened in, in uh, Genesis 1. Which it is not. Two totally different things done by two totally different entities. This is God creating. So when God said. Take this to Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. The Almighty. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. God who is is speaking right here. Let us make man in our image. The image that he's talking about is spirit, blood, and water. God who is is the blood witness doing the speaking. His prophet is God to come. His priest is God who was. They are doing this creating making man in our image, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and the cattle of the field. Three witnesses again. Water witnesses. Spirit witnesses, the birds of the sky. And the beast of the field, or the cattle that's over all the earth. Those are the blood witnesses. So there's a trinity speaking. God who is, God who was, God who is to come, God who is, is speaking, and he's even including these three witnesses that are on the earth. That man is to subdue. God created man in his own image, and in the image of man he created him, male and female. The male is the spirit witness. The woman is the, the female is the water witness. The seed that grow enlarges between them, these are the blood witnesses. As children, they grow up to replace their parents as a man or as a woman becoming you see how it works blood witnesses until they reach the age of majority the age of maturity and then they become one or the other like the father or like the mother the male or the female but note the important thing here is that he created man as a male and a female together they make up the man one plus two plus three is the number of man six the seed in the middle that's the number two part, the blood witnesses are the witnesses that come last that are made ahead of the water witness. That's why the blood witnesses are number two rather than three. Even though they came last, they're made first. Christ makes reference to this, but generally people don't know what he's talking about. But he's talking about the spirit, the blood, and the water witnesses. When he's speaking about my Father who art in heaven, that's his spirit witness. When he's speaking about the Holy Spirit, the helper that's going to come and help you, that's his water witness, the physical vehicle of locomotion. Just like your physical body is your physical vehicle of locomotion. So this is, this represents the six day people. They came from the waters of Genesis 1.20. It includes the amphibious races, the reptilian races, now the mammalian races that are on the earth right now and they've been here for a very 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 long time oldest humans fossils 300,000 years old the oldest remains character uh, uh, categorized as modern 300,000 years I know some people interpret the Bible they think we've only been here 7,000 years or something like that we've been here the earth's been here for 4.4 billion years and life on this planet, well, the oldest human 
I mean, maybe you can consider Lucy a brute. But she was walking around on the earth 3.2 million years ago. That's how long ago. That's the time differential between what God is doing here and what the Lord God, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Many people have the visualization of the Lord God butchering animals and putting them in animal skins. That's not what this is saying. Everything from Genesis 2, 7, when the Lord God made the garden and made Adam, takes place in heaven. Eve coming out of the, the side of Adam, in heaven. There's no procreation going on until after they, the Lord God put them in human skins and drove them out of the garden, blocked the way using the cherubs, right? And then they're on the earth. Well, Adam and Eve are the first for the seventh day people. Lord God made them. And the sons that came after, they were put in human skins. It's directly after this, we go to Genesis 4, that you see Adam knew Eve, which is what we do in the infinite realm as gods. We go into one another. That's knowing somebody in the infinite realm and incarnating inside of them and being placed around the table in the way that that particular God desires. We're all gods in the infinite realm. Everyone that has a part in Adam and Eve's recent incarnation. Seventh-day people. That's what we are. The six examples of six-day people are Chinese, Aborigines, American Indians, Indians all over the planet. They are RH positive exclusive. Generally black hair, straight, beardless. They've been here for a long, 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 long time. Six-day people. So in the infinite realm, they represent those created inside of Adam on the day God created him through his word in the infinite realm. Before heaven and earth were ever thought of. Before the satanic rebellion. That ended up culminating in the death of Adam. That's what heaven and earth are all about. The restoration of all things is the restoring of each of Adam's, the members of his body, one member at a time. On the earth, we are members of Adam's body. In heaven, we are members of Christ's body. In the infinite realm, we're members of God's body. And that Those are the three witnesses that, that you see in Genesis 1, 1. God, heaven, and earth. Those are three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water. And that is the key that you use to unlock God's true Bible code. As he testifies through three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water throughout the whole Bible. And it's the soul that we're talking about right now, which is the begotten aspect. The soul. The begotten aspect. The ways that we learn more about the soul is understanding the relationship between the only begotten Son, the soul, and my Father who art in heaven, the Spirit. So whenever the Spirit says, the Scripture says, John, in, 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 in the Gospel of John, that the Father gives all power and authority to judge to the Son. There are truths of being said there for those who can read the types. Your spirit gives the authority to judge to your soul. It's within the soul that you judge. Rather than between the years, it's actually reasoning within the heart. Soul thing. That's where judgment takes place. Okay, so um, he's wanting to know, are the tares with different souls? And the answer to that is no. You have the, the parable of the wheat and the tares. And the wheat are the sons of obedience. They are what's characterized in Genesis 3.15 as, uh, as her seed. Her seed rather than your seed, who is the seed of the serpent. Cain is from the seed of the serpent. Abel is from the obedient sons of, of obedience. He's from her seed. And they have conflict, and, well, Abel winds up dead. 
this. The same exact way Adam ended up dead in the infinite realm, killed by his own brethren, who were sons of disobedience, being beguiled by Satan. Just like Cain is being used right here to replay what's happened already in the infinite realm. That's why he couldn't be killed. He had to go about doing his thing. He had to have seed come from him that came from the serpent to continue the process, God's process and plan of judgment. So we are reenacting things that we've already done over and over and over again. The realm of choice is the infinite realm where, uh, where, where you're a God. That's the cause realm. This is the effect realm. We're doing things here over and over again that we've already done. So this is an explanation. You're going to check out the RH factors, which all six, six day people have. So if you go to China and you're somebody like me that has O negative blood and something happens, you could be in a lot of trouble because 99 point percent of all Chinese people are RH positive. Like the Aborigine peoples, American Indians, blah, 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 blah. The seventh day people have a mix of negative blood and different hair colors, different eye colors, and things like that. Gods. So, for example, the Spanish Inquisition, seventh day people came to the Americas and found six day people and generally killed them using every, mean, every means at their disposal. That's a replay of exactly what happened in Adam when the gods rebelled against him, his brethren, and incarnated inside of him and interacted with the six-day people that were created in him on the day he was made. So we're replaying these things over and over and over again. And we're doing things that have already been done in the infinite realm associated with the satanic rebellion. So that's the kind of the backdrop that we're going to explore the soul under and looking at the there's there's uh there's not going to be a dna difference between cain and abel the reason is because the fruit that was eaten back in the garden it's not a real piece of fruit it was heavenly but those trees that they came from one is of the serpent and one uh one is of sons of obedience and one's of sons of disobedience. So they are commingled together within Adam and Eve. Adam gets the spirit part. Eve gets the body part. They get put together again and they can get a cane. You can get a cane to this day, seventh day people. You can get a cane or you can get an Abel. It all has to do with what already happened in the infinite realm. So the, you're not going to be able to look at the genome and see a difference. That's not the way it works. But there is a difference and the where they're tethered in heaven. Every soul is tethered to heaven. Whether it's the six day people tethered to heaven of Genesis 1 8 of this creation, or whether it's the highest heaven of Genesis 1 1, where seventh day people souls are tethered, connected to. But then heaven itself has two sides. Let's see if I can show it to you. Oh, it's, it's, it's down here. I didn't pull it up. Heaven has two sides. You have a lake of fire side, and you have the paradise side, just like what's inside the earth. You have the Hades side and the paradise side. And members are baptized into the bosom of Abraham. We are baptized into the bosom of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right here. So the types in the stories of Scripture... And knowing their relationships as spirit, blood, and water witnesses helps you to see these things in the heaven realm. Positive side, negative side. 666, he who has wisdom, he will understand. 666 is the number of a man. Just like Christ Jesus is a heavenly man, there is a, well, bad guy. The Father, the Son, and the unholy spirit. Three witnesses testifying for the devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. These three witnesses here are the three witnesses of Satan in the infinite realm. Satan is a singularity. Like God's a singularity. But God must testify to us in this world through his three witnesses. As if he's speaking through a prism. The word 
has to be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It has to be because the universe is broken. He could not send the Word into heaven as the light of Genesis 1-3. He had to be sacrificed first, cut in two. Father and Holy Spirit had to overlap so the Son was begotten. Only then could the Son be sent as the Lamb of God into heaven of this room. But the purpose of giving you this overview is so that you can see that our spirit, soul, and body mirror that of the relationship in the relationship of the Almighty himself. The spirit, the soul, and the body of the Almighty is broken down into this way. This fellow speaking, God who is. In the same way, the word, broken down into Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Son is in the position of God who is, who does the speaking. And down here in the earth, the heaven that's between the heavens and the earth testifies for the original singularity, which is the earth of Genesis 1-1. There's no such thing as as uh, heaven's heaven and earth in Genesis 1-1. It's all one thing. But it became three things after it became formless and void and put back together again. So another way to look at the three witnesses and gain understanding about the soul is looking at the Mount of Transfiguration. The Mount of Transfiguration. This is my, my beloved son. Spirit, blood, water, Moses and Elijah standing with the Lord God. Christ, this is the Lamb of God right here. And the first two witnesses are Eve and Adam. And these are just two of the skins that they occupied in our Bible history, including Abraham and Sarah, David and Bathsheba. They, these are the two exceptions. These are the two begottens of the garden that come again and again and again as the two olive trees of Zechariah chapter 4 start at verse 11. The two candlesticks, that's their heavenly existence. The two olive trees, when they're on the earth. And they come over and over again, unlike the rest of us, who come just once, Hebrews 9.27. We die once and then the judgment. That's true of every seventh-day person. Except for Adam and Eve. They are the two that this whole creation is all, that, that's all about. The Lamb of God created them. And he's working with them through different skins throughout the entire Bible. New Testament, now Old Testament and New Testament. So let me go back up here. And uh, maybe I got a little bit ahead of myself. But what I'm trying to do is give you a backdrop to where you can see the blood witness. But you're looking inwardly at your soul. That is where your spirit and your body overlap, the same as the Father and the Holy Spirit overlapping. Luke 135. Power from on high overshadows the Holy Spirit. The Holy Child is called the Son of God. That's the begotten aspect, just like the heaven is begotten, your soul is begotten. These are all begotten aspects, and each one testifies for the original singularity, which means that imagine that you have no spirit, you have no soul, you have no body. They're all the same thing. That's the original singularity before you became broken. Your soul is the witness that testifies for that original singularity. Not the spirit and not the body. The spirit has a beginning and it has an end. The body has a spirit. I mean, it has a beginning and it has an end. The soul is what's eternal. The soul is going to continue to enlarge, 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 enlarge till the spirit and the body become just cre little crescent moons until... At the next time that we are remade, they disappear completely. My Father art in heaven is going to disappear completely. The Holy Spirit is going to disappear completely because the Son is going to continue to enlarge until it becomes the Word again. Okay. So, the, the wheat, the able side, sons of obedience. Tares, sons of disobedience. All that is decided in the infinite realm during the satanic rebellion. We're replaying things that's already that's already been done. So those that the, was represented a commingling of the seed, her seed and your seed, within the garden pair. That the seventh day people, the seeds that were still perpetuating the seed 
in our offspring, whether we get a Cain or an Abel, right? That's that's just the way it goes, based upon what happened in the infinite realm. And we're dealing with things that we've been dealing with since before heaven and earth were ever created. The uh, Chinese, Aborigines, Native Indians evolved. Six-day races, RH positive. So the debate about creation or evolution, the answer is both. They're both true. That's why that uh, people are going to be debating that until God knows when. Then the um, cover the differences that there's no difference in the genome. It's not the physical part that's going to be different. It has to do with the soul and where that soul is tethered to. That's the important thing to realize. I didn't understand even now when one is called to serve. If that means that once we obey the gospel, then God calls us to be an evangelist, a minister, a pastor, a teacher, or whatever. Maybe that is what you're uh, what you're asking about. But I must be missing something in the commentary. Serve to serve what, which I assume is the body of Christ and then or whom the body of christ so first off every living host whether human birds air beast everything that god just mentioned my apologies i had to stop a second i had a visitor everything mentioned in genesis 1 that we just read about the birds of the air the fish of the sea the people all have souls they have a spark that comes from god that overshadows the physical body taken from the earth, the dust of the ground, and the soul is begotten. Everything that's here has a heavenly and a heavens counterpart. That's the way that it works. The environment that we have here in this environment has been created to simulate, like a matrix, have you seen the movie The Matrix? To simulate what's happening in the real world, but the real world isn't this earth. The real world isn't even heaven of Genesis 1-1. They're both created. They have a beginning. They have an end. The only realm that's real is the infinite realm where we all come from, where we all know one another. All of us incarnate inside of each other. We all know each other intimately. We're doing things that have already been done. Ecclesiastes 1. Start at 9. The, um, so the devils, the demons... A lot of the people that I'm associating with right now are talking about the devils and the demons. And you can see it, what's going on inside of our environment, within the United States, within the world, with the lockdowns and the mistreatment of people, as if they want to kill us. It's exactly what they wanted in the infinite realm. Satan's marauders are out there. Most of them are cowards. They're hiding behind the scenes. House of Rothschild, Consul on Foreign Relations, Bilderbergs, Trilads. They, are, they have earthly positions of power corresponding to the heavenly authority power of this darkness that we're living under right now. And their job is to kill us, just like they did in the infinite realm. They cannot help themselves. Any power they have comes from far, far beyond. Everything is fixed, and they cannot change it. And we cannot change it, because we're doing things that have already been done before. So um, we're doing things already done, and the seventh-day people that are here are gods. Exactly what David says in the Psalms. Exactly what Christ quotes to Israel whenever they're wanting to stone him for claiming to be the Son of God. He says, why are you throwing rocks at me? You're gods. I'm just the Son of God. Because Jesus Christ is an incarnation of the Lamb of God on earth. He's in the incarnation of an incarnation of an incarnation. Is what he is when he's walking around on this earth. The Word made flesh. The Word is God. The same as God, one with God in the infinite realm. He's there right now. He does no need of being restored or anything. But God asked him to incarnate this heaven of Genesis 1 1. And then, once he was sacrificed, then he was asked to incarnate inside of heaven of our creation as the Lamb of God, who is the Lord God who made Adam and Eve in Genesis 2. 
Then when he came down to the earth, that's what John said, the Lamb of God. But the Lamb of God was still in heaven, in the center of the throne. Revelation chapter 7, 17. He's still there. Just like God and his word are there. In the infinite realm, I alluded to some of that last week. If you can get those incarnations straight in your head and realize you're a God in the infinite realm, but you're the incarnation of a God here. So when Adam died in the infinite realm, you incarnated inside of him and you died too. Now you have to be restored so that Adam can be restored. This whole universe is Adam. The heavens is his spirit. Heaven is his soul. The earth is his physical body. Then uh, he's, he's uh, wondering about the uh, change at the substance level. Now there is a quantitative value. There is substance and what's going in, in a substance difference in different people. It's big difference, the biggest difference between the natural man and the one called by our gospel. The natural man. This is a person called by our gospel. So in the beginning, before we're saved, we just have an empty hole in the middle of our soul that has to be filled. It's either going to be filled by God or it's going to be filled by Satan. What's it going to be? Well, I should say for those that are called. And maybe that's, that's uh, what Michael's referring to about when one's called to serve. One that has the new inner man inside of him. Paul makes three references to it. Have uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 3, 16, Ephesians, Colossians 3, uh, verse 10. The new inner man. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. The faith of Jesus. That's from Romans chapter 3, verse 26, which is translated faith in Jesus, but that's not what the Greek says. This is the faith of Jesus. The possession milled out for us at Calvary. What the preacher carries with him that is that actually is part of the faith-to-faith -faith transaction from Romans 1, 16 and 17. Preaching the word, the Holy Spirit convicting, spirit of the word is the spirit witness, the faith of Jesus is the blood witness, the Holy Spirit of promise. This comprises the new inner man that goes right into your that little faith of Jesus right in the middle part there seats right in that hole in your heart. And then from that moment on, whenever this happens, you're baptized into Christ on the cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago. So when he died, you died. He was in the earth three days. You were in the earth three days. He was raised from the dead. You were raised from the dead. He was raised up above all the heavens and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 34. You were too. Finished product. Done. Then from that heavenly position, God calls you to serve, using Michael's terminology. You are an ambassador from heaven sent here into a strange world. Having the new inner man in you and feeding the new inner man in you, that's the important part. Just having it is not enough. It's renewed day by day by keeping your nose between the pages of God's living word, particularly the Pauline epistles. That's the active part. The whole Bible's living. It has three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water too. It has two veils inside, just like you do. Within the two veils is the Pauline epistles. Thirteen of them. Thirteen kingdom epistles are the body part, the water witness part. Thirty-nine Old Testament books, that's the spirit part. So the spirit and the water part, they're for you, but they're not written to you as members of Christ's body. Pauline epistles, Paul's the steward, the dispensation of God's grace. He's the one that teaches. This is where all these concepts come from concerning the mystery. Being, whenever Paul's talking about a mystery, it's something that was withheld and then revealed, but he's also there's also another component of baptizing. Baptism into something. Mystery of Christ. You're baptized into Christ. You're incarnate inside of Christ. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3, verse 4. The Christ is in you, and you are in Christ. Just the way that Christ was saying that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. They either are parallels, and they're types, and there are lessons to be learned in recognizing the pattern 
of those types. So you can learn more about the soul, your own soul, by understanding more about the Son, the only begotten Son, who's the blood witness also, in his relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. When he speaks about the Holy Spirit, it's like your soul speaking about your physical body. He's speaking about my Father who art in heaven. He's talking he's your soul, understanding more about your own spirit. So the soul shares the circle. All blood witnesses do this. The Son and my Father art in heaven. See, they share a circle. Using that as an example, they're right here. The heaven realm is incarnate inside of you. But you see, the soul also shares the circle with the body. So the Son has common attributes with the Father up here, the glory of the Father and all that. And with the Holy Spirit too. <laughs> Makes the soul unique because nowhere do the spirit and the body touch. They overlap the soul. The soul is the expanse in between the waters above and the waters below. Just like with the heavens, heaven and the earth. So Christ in me looks like this. This is how it started, the new man. Christ in me, the hope of glory, Colossians 1, start at 24, end up at 27. But then the thing to realize, 2 Corinthians 5, start at 16, about knowing Christ in the flesh, but knowing him this way no longer. Christ is incarnate inside of me. The Son is the blood witness that's in my soul, the, my Father art in heaven, my spirit, Holy Spirit. My physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Three witnesses inside of three witnesses. A man inside of a man. So that God can be in Christ in you. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God has been in Christ since Genesis 2-3. When he rested. He didn't just rest. Go somewhere and sit down somewhere. He sat down inside the Lord God who then began doing his creating. So in my access to the heaven realm is through Christ in me. This is the incarnation of heaven. It's a blueprint of heaven. So that knowing Christ in me helps me to see and visualize spiritually with the eyes of the inner man the things in heaven. Using his living word. And then access to the infinite realm. We have that. We're gods. We're on the other side of that veil. Infinite gods. But our access is not by looking upward. It's by looking inward. Inside of Christ in me. That's where God is doing his best to reconcile the, reconcile the world to himself. From the inside. So the... Uh, The, the point that I want to make here is, is that there are, there are different levels of overlapping from the spirit and the body. The more the overlapping, the, more, the greater the soul. The greater the overlapping, the more consciousness, Christ consciousness, that comes from the enlarging new inner man that's inside of us. That began the day that we obeyed the gospel. New inner man inside of us is what changes everything. In, in my book, The Mystery Explained, then I say, oh no, we don't want to do that now, do we? Well, that's, remind me in six hours. Um, sorry, I lost my train. Train there for a second. Oh, the overlapping of the soul. Some people have great spirit that overlaps their body, enlarged soul mature and some people have just a sliver in the middle not a lot of overlapping of the spirit and the body giving them less consciousness less awareness so it's through prayer studying god's word building up the new inner man with active ingredients that are in the pauline epistles that helps that consciousness to grow it helps you to see things that other people cannot see so i'm very confident that I'm showing you these things that most, or let's say many, cannot see. What the heck is this guy talking about? He was after decades of feeding that new inner man, reading the Pauline epistles every single day. And making them stronger, stronger, stronger. Having victory over the flesh. Because at some point they become about the same size and there's a battle. And then 
You're either going to follow the path of the spirit or you're going to follow the path of the flesh. Follow the path of spirit, Christ consciousness grows larger and larger and larger inside of you. But the, the difference for the sons of disobedience, you see, did I pull that diagram up for you guys? Is that it? That it? Let's, this is the diagram. This is from my book. This is the natural man unsaved. He has a bottomless pit right in the middle of his soul. Whenever Eve was taken out of Adam, it was the heart part that was broken. It's like he has half and she has half. And so it's through the bond of marriage that the two become one flesh again. The uniting, reuniting of the soul within both of them. And then leading to the seed and the perpetuation of, well, humanity. So the uh, this is the diagram that I just showed you with God inside of Christ inside of me. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. I'm the water witness servant. But over here, this is going to be where the difference is between your Cain's and your Abel's. Your sons of obedience and your sons of disobedience. These are under the mystery of Christ. These are under the mystery of lawlessness. These are, have a deluding influence, forced to believe what is false all the days of their life. You cannot save them. They're done. God is the one that sent the deluding influence, and one deluded by God is deluded indeed. Many, many, many are professing Christians who obeyed false gospels. That's why we have thousands and thousands of different denominations all interpreting the same word in 20,000 different ways. People are believing what is false. And so that they will be judged because of things they've already done in the infinite realm. That's just the way that it works. Most of professing Christianity is comprised of these blinded by denominationalism, cannot see the forest for the trees kind of thing. And that's why so many agree to disagree. They have to because they're being, oops, holy cow going through uh, here we go so here's the difference that you're looking for it has to do with where their heart is tethered in heaven of Genesis 1 1 the gospel is sent for seventh-day people only I know how that sounds to a lot of missionaries they like to go to China they like to go to Africa they like to go to these places where there's only six-day people God isn't calling them they are victims all of them every six-day person on the planet victims None of them took part in the satanic rebellion. They didn't know how to. They're trapped inside of Adam's body as incarnations in the infinite realm. It's the gods like Adam. They incarnate inside of him. Those are the troublemakers. Some are good. Some are not good. Bad guys, good guys. All over the world. And these guys are the ones that are in control. These are the ones that have power. Because this is... We're living in the evil age and the devil is the god of this world. That's the way it is until they're chained. That's coming up with the black star. They're all going to be chained. We're going to be taken. We're going to be given rewards. We're going to be placed in the heavenly positions vacated by these people. And these people get to incarnate at the end of the age. The devil, the beast, the false prophet, members of their body fill the earth. They kill those that obey the gospel of the kingdom. And those of you who think that we're living at the end of the age, Matthew 24, verse 14, and then this gospel of the kingdom will go to the whole world and then the end will come. We do not even preach the gospel of the kingdom today. Elijah is going to preach that when he comes to restore all things. We still have over 3,000 years before we get to the end of the age. The day of the Lord is only about to start. We're in heaven for the whole day of the Lord, helping Elijah restore all things, pushing the levers in heaven. On earth, things will be restored as it is in heaven. God's got to restore heaven first, though. That's where we come in, members of Christ's body. He needs us to occupy those heavenly seats that are up there. Okay, then, uh, holy cow, this is getting long. Christ in you is a whole lot like God handing down New Jerusalem from heaven 
of Genesis 1-1 to heaven of Genesis 1-8. That happens in Revelation 21, 1+. Plus. He hands it down. See, the body of Elijah, the body of Moses, and the body of Christ, we make up the three witnesses of this administration. New Jerusalem. Coming down, but only after this age is over. The judgment hasn't come yet. Elijah hasn't restored everything yet. He has to, which includes the temple that the beast will occupy at the end of the age. We're nowhere near that. The earth's going to be terraformed by the black star coming this time by water and fire. Elijah's going to come, restore all things. And civilization, like it's in the United States, the leader of the world, people speak English, just like they spoke Greek. Right? In Paul's day, language of commerce was Greek, Greece, the people of Greece. In the future, it's going to be Hebrew. In the future, it's going to be the sons of Israel. They're going to have the greatest kingdom on earth between the great river of Egypt and the river Euphrates. That hasn't happened yet. That still has to happen. Okay, the, uh, so we got through the inner man. What about the soul incarnating in past and future ages? Seventh-day people can incarnate only one time per age. Only Adam and Eve are the exception. The two begotten ones. Christ is the only begotten of heaven. Adam and Eve are the two begottens of the earth. One representing the heavens. One representing the earth. So Eve is mother of all living. All. Genesis 3.20. Just before they're put in human skins. So you see in uh, 1 Corinthians 10. How people are being baptized into the body of Moses. Moses is another skin for our mother Eve, just like Noah. They're being baptized in the body of Moses for a reason. But they have counterparts in the body of Elijah, who are the angels. The marriage supper of the Lamb is about putting the man part and the angel part back together again so they can live in heaven, the mortal soul. So the seventh day people, one time per age. Six day people, you can incarnate a hundred times in an age. One is the evolutionary path, six day people. You're on an evolutionary path going spiraling upward, upward, and outward, and outward, and outward. Seven day people, totally different. We have hearts tethered to Genesis 1 1, the heaven of Genesis 1 1, and we are gods from God's infinite realm here for judgment as victims or perpetrators. All six day people are victims. So is it more developed in future past ages? By far in the future. Wait, wait. Every time creation is remade, it gets closer to being heaven on earth. For the first more than a thousand recreations, this is the way that I see it, seeing through the spirit. Then the earth and what's going on in heaven, everything is still a water witness. Everything is still a water witness. So when you're in heaven of Genesis 1-8, you still have to go to heaven of Genesis 1-1. Just like we're anticipating going to heaven here, same thing in heaven. Same thing. Looking upwards into heaven of Genesis 1-1. That's where everybody wants to go. So the, the whenever going to heaven here, for many, many people, they're not members of Christ's body. They're not members of the kingdom bride. They don't obey any of the Gospels. They're just good people. Heaven's full of them. But when they get to heaven, it's going to be heaven of Genesis 1-8. And then they are going to work their work, the work, the work their way. To become a member of the kingdom bride eventually and then join us in the lamb through the marriage supper of the lamb so that they can have an existence in the highest heaven you know that sounds kind of complicated but that's the way that it is so as future ages come the soul is going to become amplified currently you can see the physical body you cannot see the soul you can't see the spirit that's not the way it is in the future in the future souls are going to be the visible aspect you cannot see the physical body, which won't be called the physical body anymore, obviously. And the spirit, you cannot see them in the future, just the soul part. Living souls walking around, same way it was in the ages of Genesis 1-1. Underdeveloped at first, because creation has to be remade many, many, many times as a blood witness. Before all things are restored. When all things are restored, there's no more authority. Everything's subjected to the sun. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27, and then everything's subjected back to God who is all in all because we all go back to the infinite realm, all Humpty Dumpty restored. That's the beginning and the end of this creation. Then the purpose for it, the purpose for the ages, is all about judgment for active participation in the satanic rebellion. 
That's what it's all about. Then um, we look out into the, uh, in closing, we look out into the night to see the darkness everywhere and twinkling stars. You think that's normal? That is not normal. That's not the way it is in the future. The limiting factor of seeing the to the far side of the, co of the, the universe is because it's filled with light. The light gets in the way. And we're not seeing reflected starlight anymore in the future. It doesn't even make sense. Everything is light. The further that you go into the future, and heaven, earth becomes more like heaven each time heaven and earth are remade. Currently, you have a large size differential between heaven and earth, so that the host of heaven, the least, which is Peter, is greater than this entire universe. Because Every host in the heaven realm is almost infinite, every single one of them. But each time heaven and earth are remade, they get closer and closer to the same size until the time differential all but disappears. And then there's more interaction. You can't interact with Michael the Archangel. It's impossible. He's frozen motionless, like a constellation from our perspective. Ages to come, it will not be that way. That's the way that it is, that it is right now. So that's the... Uh, lesson that I want to share with you for this week and uh, appreciate your support very very much there is enough if you become a mystery report subscriber for $25 a year and you begin at the beginning of the exercises there are already enough there's enough information in there for you to see God's wisdom you'll get it from my book the mystery explain you're going to get it from the six introductory videos they're right here right here start here number two number three number four number five number six by the time you get through here, then you're ready to start my book, The Mystery Explained. Mystery Explained. Overlapping circles is the key. There are three that testify, the spirit, the blood, and the water, and the three are into the one. God's wisdom, hidden in plain sight. When you become a Mystery Report subscriber, right here, you get a copy of the ebook version of my book for free. Happy to send it to you. If, you become, if you're a member of the Tutor Program, Tutor Program, I need to remove the chat from here. I keep forgetting to do it. The uh, the fifty dollar program per year. Then you can send me questions, just like Michael. And then the the best questions are picked to become lessons in the weekly newsletters. If you haven't done so, watch this webinar on nano silver. I can see you guys are falling asleep about the threat, the COVID nineteen threat that's out there. Propaganda is everywhere, and people are letting their guard down. The object is to send everybody back out, get you demonstrating if they can, and get you infected. We're in between the first and the second wave right now. Get more information right at their website. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the next uh, Mr. Report.